Alrighty, it's time to finally do a US NCO walkthrough. Just kidding, I already did a couple, but this is gonna be the national competition because that's what we're taking this Sunday. And you know, I gotta practice, so why not show you guys how I practice? Let's do it. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we are gonna be walking through the 2017 US NCO national competition. So let's put a timer for 90 minutes and get started. So lithium reacts with water to form lithium hydroxide. What mass of lithium is required to produce 12 grams? Okay, so this is just Stoichiometry, let's do it. 12 grams over the molar mass, 6.9 plus 16 plus 1, and then this is equal to. Or we could just multiply by the mole fraction of, I mean, the mass percent of lithium. So the mass percent of lithium is just going to be times 6.9, and then this should be our answer. Okay, so 3.46 should be our answer, so 3.5 is B. 2. Complete combustion of 1 gram of, what the heck, of 1 gram of the hydrocarbon pagodane. What the heck is that? Give 3.38 grams carbon dioxide. What is the empirical formula? Okay, so basically all the carbon in a hydrocarbon goes to carbon dioxide. So we can multiply 3.38 grams by the mass percent of uh, carbon to get the mass of carbon. And then this will give us mass of carbon, which we get as so 32 plus 44. Okay, uh, 0.922. And then, so this is the mass of carbon. And then we could get that the mass of hydrogen is just one minus this. So one minus answer. And then we get 0 0.078. So we have 0 0.078 moles of hydrogen. How many moles of carbon do we have? 0 0.922 over 12. So it's approximately the same. So it should be just CH. Okay. Three, electrolysis of 10 gram binary metal chloride deposits 6.207 grams of the pure metal. What is this metal? Binary. So that means it's going to be like XCl2. Wait, what? No, wait. Does binary mean XCl or XCl2? Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know my terminology. Binary means it splits into two things, right? So I'm assuming... Yeah, I'm assuming it's XCl. That would make a lot more sense. Okay. Yeah, like a binary solid is two things. Okay. So XCl and then 6.02. 207. So we have to have that the mass percent of the metal 10 times the mass percent, which is m over m plus 35.45, has to equal 6.207. So if we solve for m, let's see, we do get 10m minus 6.207m. So this is going to be the coefficient of the m, and then we have to divide 35, and then we have to do 35.45 times 6.207 over this non thing. Okay. I was just solving the equation in my head, so what does this give? 58. So whatever 58 is, uh, C. Cerium. Alrighty, the decomposition of 1.0 grams of which of the following compounds into its constituent elements gives the most amount of N2 gas. So basically, we want the mass percent of nitrogen to be the greatest. So I'm pretty sure D would be the answer, <laughs> like just straight up. Yeah, that like literally D has the most nitrogen, so it makes the most sense. D. Alright, five. Uh, per manganate ion, oxidize hydrogen peroxide in acidic solution according to the following equation, okay? If 35 milliliters of acidic, okay, is required to consume all the H2O2, what is the concentration? Okay, so basically we have 0 0.035 times 0 0.15 moles of KMnO4, and then we know that the ratio of MnO4 minus to H2O2 is 2 to 5. So in order to get moles of H2O2, we had to multiply by 5 over 2, and then we had to divide by our volume, which would be 0 0.05, because 50 milliliters, so we'll just plug this in our calculator, would be Gucci. 0 0.035 times 0 0.15 times 2.5 uh, over 0 0.05. 0 0.2625, okay. So 0 0.263, which is C. Six. Solution containing 10 grams of which substance dissolved in 100 grams of water will show the greatest freezing point depression compared to pure water. So the uh, equation you have to know is I, K, F, M, and K, F stays the same, M is molality, and I is how many pieces it breaks up into. So essentially, uh, this one breaks up into two pieces, this one also breaks up into two pieces, so that's for sure not the answer, because it'll have a lower molality, because it'll be, because 10 grams will have less ions, basically. So for sure not that. Could be this one, but it has a less molar mass than this one, so I'll have to calculate that. Oh wait, it's for sure this one then, right? If it has less molar mass. Yeah, so it's probably this one? Okay, I'm not sure, let's check. Okay, and it's for sure not this one. So it's between A and C, let's just calculate it separately. So in 10 grams, we have, so 10 grams of MgSO4, we have 10 over 24 plus um, 32 plus 16 times 4. That's how many moles, and then it splits into 2. So that 
is going to be how many our molality basically or our i times n. What was it? Zero point one six six. Blah blah. Okay. And then for the other one, we have NH two S two O three. So it'll be twenty three times two plus thirty two times two plus sixteen times three. And then we had to multiply by three. Okay, that should be bigger. One nine is way bigger than what we had before, so it should just be C. All right, when a solution of barium hydroxide is mixed with a solution of iron three chloride, what is observed? Okay, so barium chloride is soluble. Iron hydroxide is not soluble. I don't know whether iron hydroxide is colored though. Is BaCl2? Yeah, BaCl2 should be because the only um the only uh exceptions for halogens are P PMS. So that would be lead, silver, and mercury. Okay. Um. So it's either A or B. Ah. Oh. Iron probably would be colored, right? Okay, let's see. Iron three. So yeah, for sure it's unpaired. So I'm gonna go with colored. I think that should be right. Oh, but is it? Is it really? Oh yeah. Okay, whatever. Iron themed, like it would be colored. Which element is a liquid at twenty five degrees? Okay, this is just a memorization thing. Like I remember it. Like F and Cl are gas, then it transitions to liquid, then to solid. So bromine is gonna be the liquid here. Concentration of which approximately zero. 0.01 solution could be most accurately uh, determined by what the heck how? How am I supposed to know? So it should be something that's colored. So I'm assuming we have to look at the transition metals and make sure that they have unpaired electrons or I guess we could just do like which one stands out. So Mn is over here. Okay. Uh, cobalt is over here. Zinc is no unpaired and lead is somewhere in the middle, right? Lead is not even a transition metal, so I'm assuming it's gonna be zinc because it stands out. Oh, but it has to, it just has to be visible light that it absorbs. What the heck, how am I supposed to know? Mm -hmm. I want to say cobalt, but like it doesn't stand out. Like, what's the difference between cobalt and magnesium? Why would cobalt, whatever, we don't have time to spend thinking about this, we're just gonna go with B. All right, we can come back to it later. Uh, 0 0.1 molar solution of which of the salts is most acidic? Okay, so this is gonna be like weak, ba weak bases and strong bases, conjugate acids of those. So, AlOH3 is not a strong base, so that means that the Al ion itself is going to be pretty acidic. So that seems like a good candidate. The next one, NaOH is a strong base, so the Na plus ion is a weak, or like it doesn't have any properties, acidic or not. Mg, same thing, Na, same thing, so it has to be A. Also, like you could think about it this way, aluminum like grabs a bunch of OH minus ions, so it makes it more acidic. Okay, a gas with P is equal to 615 millimeters, okay. If H is equal to 65, so basically this height difference is created by the extra pressure on this side. So we had to add the 65, Wait, is this a uh, mercury, right? Okay, yeah. So we just do 615 plus 65 and we get 680. So C. The way I like to remember it is like, if it's lower, then more force getting put on it. So you have to add instead of subtracting. Okay. Oh, I love reading durettes. Very nice. Okay, so we got to go from the top and we go 31, 32, 33, a little bit more, 30. And yeah, we had to estimate the next digit. So 33 point, wait, what? 31? Wait, no, no. Okay, so for on that, why is it 30? Oh, oh, it's a different point, it's not 30. Oh my god, I'm stupid. Okay, so it said it'd be 30.30. Yeah, 30.30 seems legit. So you gotta do the bottom of the meniscus. Menis I can't speak. Meniscus, okay. Okay, a beaker containing 25 milliliters of liquid 1 amino pentane, CH3, CH2, 4, 2, and what the heck? Okay, it's placed on a hot plate and brought to a boil. As it boils, total energy of the system stays constant. Yes, I guess, yeah, because that's a thing. Okay. The hydrogen bonding is disrupted, so it is boiled. That sounds about right. Ion dipole forces between... It doesn't look like there's any ions involved here. No. Pentane and ammonia gas are formed. It's boiled, so like, it's not a, a chemical change, so it should just be B. Because basically, if it's a physical boiling change, like, the only thing that changes are the intermolecular forces get broken, so... Into both ends of a meter long glass tube, samples of gas are introduced. Oh, this is an epic uh, example. I remember this thing. My teacher had a slide on this. It's basically like they diffuse at different rates. So the one that's more heavy will diffuse slower. So HCl is way more heavy, so it'll diffuse slower and it'll be closer 
So it should be closer to where the hydrogen chloride is inserted, so B. What is the principal energetic factor in the lack of miscibility? Um, it's basically the strength of intermolecular forces between H2O molecules, because they have hydrogen bonds, and those are really strong, so there's no way that the C6H14 has any chance with the beautiful H2O molecules that are so attractive to each other. So it should just be B. Wait, what? Did it skip one? 15. Oh, I said skip 15. So 16 is B, and 15 we still gotta do. So, at its normal boiling point, a negative 1.0 de degrees Celsius a sample of gaseous butane at 1.0 atmospheres occupy the volume of 1.0 liters. What is the pressure if the volume is decreased to 0 0.70 while maintaining the temperature there? Uh, I'm assuming we go with ideal gas law, so it's divide is multiply the volume by 0.7 so you have to divide the pressure by 0.7 so it'll be 100 over 17 i mean over 7 i mean 10 over 7 well so 1.4 okay 17 noisu okay the melting point of silicon dioxide uh, 1713 degrees celsius is higher than the melting point of silicon what is the best explanation for this like I think, okay, so basically both of them are non-polar, but silicon dioxide has a greater molar mass, meaning it's more polarizable, which means it should have stronger bonds. Okay. Oh, wait, they're both covalent network, dude, so that's not, okay, so this is no, this is no. Yeah, god dang it. I know for a fact this is true. <laughs> Why you gotta do this to me, man? So silicon would form cubic, have six things coming out. Ah, oh, yeah. Why? Why is it so hard? Oh, wait, wait, what? No. Silicon has four, so it should form four. Oh, okay, no, 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 so this should be fine. Okay, so I'm pretty sure it should be A then. Because, like, silicon is like carbon, right? So it should form tetrahedral stuff still. Okay. A unit cell of a cubic form DNS is shown below. Okay, so this stuff is fairly straightforward, except I can't really understand the diagram. Okay, so it got one on each corner, a space-centered cubit with some random stuff inside. So there are one per face, so we divide all those by two, so we do six over two. The reason why we divide by two is because like half of the atom is in one cube and one, half of the atom is in a different cube. And then we gotta add in the corners, which are worth one eighth each, so it's eight over eight, because only one eighth of the beer is inside the thing, and then the other four are going to be all inside. Are those all inside? I literally cannot tell. It looks like they're all inside, so the, that'll, oh, that's separate. So four of the ZN and, um, Four, so four of both then. Okay, so C. Wait, are they on the faces? Doesn't look like they're on the faces, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, okay, so we're just gonna go with C. 19. What is the delta H for the reaction? Okay, this is so fun, I love this kind of question. You just subtract nonsense. So we gotta do, um, so we gotta do negative 296.4 and then times 2 plus 2 times negative 285.8 and then subtract the other side, which is 3. Oh, no, we don't even have to worry about O2 because that's zero, and then minus 2 times negative 20.15. Okay, so this will be very negative. Negative 296.4 times 2 minus 2 times 285.8 plus 40, I mean 2 times 20.15 is negative 1124.1. So D. I have a feeling I'm getting trolled. Am I getting trolled? No, it should be right. Yeah, we're good. I think we're good. Plum, which factors can the Gibbs free energy chain for a reaction depend? So, of course, it's temperature because you got your delta H minus C delta S. Concentration, huh? Well, like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. because uh, G is equal to negative RT ln K, so both of these matter. C. The natural logarithm of the vapor pressure in bar is a function of the reciprocal of absolute temperature. What is the heat of sublimation? Ah, yeah. So, when it sublim sublimes, what the heck? So, as temperature increases, your vapor pressure. Heat of sublimation. Ah, uh, okay, I think there's an equation here for this stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like LNP. Oh, wait, vapor pressure is a solid, dude. Yeah, so the equation is just the middle one in the box, so it should be like LNP is equal to uh, negative the delta H over RT plus constant. Oh, this makes sense. That's why, that's why this is a line, because... Oh, so the slope is going to be, wait, yeah, the slope is going to be negative delta H over R. So we just have to multiply the slope by 8.314, and it should be Gucci game. Well, like negative of the, yeah, okay. So uh, 8.314 times, what was it? 4544. So it should be 338 kilojoules, okay. 
37.8, yeah. See, 22. What has, which has the greatest entropy at zero degrees Celsius? So one mole of, okay, greatest. So for sure not this one. Uh, this one seems right. Is adding another gas make it more entropic? To be, right? Because if you have, because one has a, wait. Yeah, because you add the individual entropies, I'm pretty sure. Oh, but that's H2. Bruh. Yeah, okay, so if you decompose something into its elements, it's obviously gonna have more entropy. Yeah, yeah, so it should just be D. Okay, we're going D. Watch me get trolled, but I feel like it should be D. All right, what is the delta G of CH4 at 298 Kelvin? All data are given 298 Kelvin. Okay. Bruh. So we want the delta G of formation. Wait, so CH4 should be from carbon, right? Oh, we gotta do this like separately or something? Seems bad. Well, basically we want to find the delta G of the reaction CS plus 2H2 gas um, yields CH4 gas, right? So we know that if we, we want to break this up into other equations, we have that for CO2, it's C solid plus, um, well, basically we just want to find out what C solid is and then we're good. Okay, and because we can find delta G, oh, wait, what? Wait, what? Why can't we just literally just do delta H minus T delta S? I think, yeah, we could just do T delta S. So the delta S of this reaction is going to be um, 186.3 minus 130.7 times 2. And then we have to find delta S of C. So C S plus O2 gas yields CO2. And then H2 plus 2H2 plus O2 yields 2H2O. Or should we this one half. Dang, this is harder than I thought. Okay, so we do this real quick. We get that the entropy of O should be 188.8 minus whatever H2 is, which is 130.7, and then multiply this by 2, and you get O, and then we want to find C, so we have to subtract from CO2, so 213.7 minus this. So this is entropy for CS, and then if we want to find the and then if we want to find the overall entropy or the entropy change, we got to do this plus two times this. Wait, what? No. Ugh. This is kind of hard, dude. Oh, yikes. This is not that straightforward. Oh, we use Hess's law. So we have H2. We have Cs plus O2. And we have um, H2 plus one half O2. And we want to add these so that... Okay, so we could do... This one? No, but how do you cancel out like CO2 nonsense? So we could subtract twice this and then add three times that or four times that. Bro, this is actually kind of hard. Okay, we're, we're gonna come back to this because this seems like a very tedious thing to do. We'll come back to it. We could probably solve it though. How much time do we have? We have an hour, which is not great. We're barely one third of the way there, but it should be fine. Okay, solution containing 0 0.060 moles of NaOH is dissolved in 200 grams of water was treated with successive aliquot dang. Same element was repeated except using higher, wait, what? Same molarity. Okay, so it's lower molar, lower concentration of NaOH. So do we know what order it is? Uh, well, it shouldn't matter, but like, shouldn't it be the same? I'm confused. It should be the same. Because it's still reacting the same way. As long as the same molarity, I mean number of moles, it should be fine. So we are just going to go with A. 25. For the reaction A plus B goes to product, the rate law is okay. What change will create cause the greatest decrease? So if we decrease this by a factor of 2, it will divide the whole thing by 4, so that's pretty good. This will also decrease by 4. Oh no, this is the most. Okay, so let's see. 26. The way you do 25 is just you plug in A over 2 for A or B over 2 for B. But this one gives you a total of dividing the entire reaction rate by 8. Okay, for a reaction with activation energy 65 kilojoules per mole, what percentage does the rate constant decrease if the temperature is increased? Okay, so we can just use the third equation in the equation box. I don't know whether you can see it if my face is blocking it, but basically what you could do is you could do ln K2 over K1 and then is equal to um, Ea over R times 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. Okay, and then you basically get, we can plug in our stuff, so we do E to the, um, what was our Ea? 65000 and then over 8.31 4 and then times 1 over what's our original 273 plus 37 is 410 and then uh, t2 is going to be uh, 410 minus 15 which is uh, 395 so our it decreases by 52 percent about okay so 51 c 27 okay so plot of ln at the function of time is linear 
So you could basically say it's first order, and then the rate constant should just be the slope. A radio, a sample of, wait, what? A sample containing only the isotope 99 mo molybdenum undergoes radioactive decay. Okay. Uh, which of the following statements about the relative activity of the thing? Well, basically the um, TC decayed way faster, right? So after 20 hours, you've had kind of complicated. So let's see. So your molybdenum's activity is just gonna go like this. Then your TC starts at zero. Then you add a little bit of molybdenum halved. Wait, what? So this over here is like e to the negative something. So the integral of that is also gonna be e to the negative something. So it looks similar. So after 120 hours, should they be approximately? Okay, so basically your first one is gonna be like e to the negative kT, the so negative 65. Or no, sorry, you get you get 2 to the negative t over 65 for this guy. And this guy is going to take the concentration that's decayed, which is 1 or yeah, 1 minus 2 times negative t over 65. And that stuff is going to decay. Wait, so let's think about it this way. Maybe it's like integral from 0 to t, and then like how long ago it was. So it would be t minus x minus t minus x times f of t or f of x. So at time t this is what it's going to be and then dx. Okay. Wait, the amount that decayed? Oh, it's so complicated. What the heck? Okay, I'm confused. I'm thoroughly confused now. Uh, let us just choose an answer and move on. So um, I doubt it's going to be exceeding ever because basically whenever it decays, it's going to decay faster in the TC thing. But after a long time, eventually both of the activities will be pretty low. So I'm, I'm going to go with D. Alright, 29. Hydrogen peroxide disproportionates to water and molecular oxygen, okay. So the rate constant is much larger for reaction 1. So basically reaction 2 is going to be the rate determining thing. Yeah, so basically I think uh, A makes sense, right, because the I the I minus is going to get converted to IO minus and then it's going to get stuck there. And yeah, wait, but B makes also more sense too, because like IO minus is going to be the limiting factor here. Wait, but that would also increase, wait, huh? Well, so it's for sure on 0th order and H2O2, so that's not the problem. So the O2 barrier does not, so it's not C or D, so it's either A or B. Well, basically all the I minus is going to get converted to IO minus. So that would increase the IO minus, so that's good. And I think that A is not necessarily true. Oh wait, adding more iodide will not increase it. I think it will. So I think A is what we're going with. Okay, 30. What is the following are true about the overall reaction A plus B? Okay, so it goes, it gets the intermediate. Okay, so this is the first intermediate. So it only has one intermediate, right? So B gets converted to C, basically. And second order? Why second order? So first order in A, but it should also be first order in B. Oh, so it should just be... Okay, I'm going to go with both. Oh, is it two only or both? Wait, no, not for sure not two. So it's either A or D. Ugh. I think we're going to go with... D. I mean, sorry, A, A. We're gonna go with A. Okay, 31. So, basically your NaCN, the Na doesn't do anything, so the only thing that affects the pH is gonna be your CN. So we'll basically have uh, CN minus, the molarity is gonna be 0 0.25 molar, and then we know that the pKb of CN is gonna be 14 minus 9.21. And basically once we have this, we could set our, we could do we know that like CN minus plus H2O yields HCN plus uh, OH minus. So basically we know that uh, X squared over our 0 0.25 minus X is equal to 10 times, 10 to the negative of its pKb, which is going to be what, 4.79? Yeah. Okay, and then we could just plug this in. We could uh, ignore the minus X here because it's probably small enough. So we get x is squared of 0.25 times 10 to the negative 4.79, 0 0.02. Okay, that's good. So we have 0 0.02 molar OH minus, or 0, 0, 002? Yeah, I think it's 0, 0, 002, right? Yeah, 0, 0, 002. Okay, and then if we take the log of this, oops, I closed it, log. Negative 2.69, so our pH should be 2.69. I mean, 14 minus 2.69, so that should be C. Okay, auto ionization water at 60 degrees Celsius is 10 to the negative 13. Uh, okay. So basically at 25 degrees is 10 to the negative 14. So as you increase your T, your K is actually 
increasing. So basically you know your delta G is constant and then it's equal to a negative RT ln K. So if your temperature increasing increases your K, are we using the right thing? Oh wait, we already, no, not this one. We want to find exothermic. So delta, no. So ln K is equal to negative, oh wait, this is like the same thing. Okay. So if increasing your temperature increases our Kw, our temperature, our, our delta H has to be negative. Or wait, what? So increasing T will make it less negative, which means it'll increase your k. Okay, so our delta h has to actually be positive. Because if it was a negative, then this would be positive, and then you're increasing your temperature would decrease your k. So it should be exothermic, okay? No, no, sorry, it should be endothermic, because it's positive. So one is not true, and then sample of pure water at 60 degrees is slightly acidic. No. Basically, the definition of not of neutral is um, pure water. So even if it's like 10 to the negative 7, or 6.5, it's still uh, fine. So neither of these are true. 33. Well, technically, the definition of neutral is that uh, concentration of OH minus and H plus are equal. Okay. How much time do we have? Okay. We're cutting it kind of close. Okay. Barium carbonate is stable at ambient temperatures but decomposes to barium oxide and carbon dioxide at higher temperatures. At a certain temperature, the system is in equilibrium in a closed system and contains appreciable amounts of all three compounds. What change will lead to an increase in pressure of CO2? Okay. So adding more BaCO3 for sure will make it shift to the right because if you increase product, it wants to counteract that by the shaft, so it goes to the right. So that makes sense. Increasing the volume of the container, that also makes sense because if it gets bigger, there's more space, so it wants to fill that space with more gas, so it'll make more CO2. So it should be both. C. 34 is 0 0.10 moles of solid NaOH is added to 1.00 liter of saturated solution of CaOH2, Ksp is equal to 8 times 10 to the negative 6. What percentage of the calcium hydroxide will precipitate at equilibrium? Okay, so let's first figure out what a saturated solution is. So, Alright, so we know that our Ksp thing is going to be for calcium hydroxide is 2x squared is equal to 8.6 times 10 to the negative 6. Whoops, what was it? What was it? What was it? Oh, just 8. And then basically, if we solve this, we get what? x is approximately um, 2, two times 10 to the negative 6 to the 1 third and that is 1.01 to 6, okay? And then, uh, that's how, that's the concentration, and then if we add it, we got to have that, our new concentration of OH, so it's gonna be X times 2X plus 0 0.1 squared is equal to 8 times 10 to the negative 6. So this should be the new, um, the new concentration of Ca2 plus ions. And basically, is there an easy way to solve this, or do we have to like quadrat? No, it's a cubic though. Can we assume that 0.1 is big enough? It really is. Actually, it might be. Let's see. So let us assume that we ignore this, then our x is going to be. Oh, so we get to do it in our head. So x would be, in this case, it would be 8 times 10 to the negative 4. Oh, okay, that works. So if originally it went. So, so it basically went from here to here for how much is dissolved. So whatever is remaining will precipitate. So we'll do 8 times 10 to the negative 4 over 0 0.0126. So 94% will precipitate. So roughly 95, yeah. C, 35. Concentration of formic acid is being determined by titration with sodium hydroxide solution. Which indicators are suitable for this titration? Okay, so it should be around the pKa. No, sorry, it should be, wait. So basically it wants to change at the equilibrium point. So basically the equilibrium point happens approximately at the pKb on the zoom in? No. Well, okay, let's do it. So like it should be when all of it has been converted to its conjugate acid. So the pKb of its conjugate acid is going to be uh, 10.25. So that means that x squared over, well, it depends on the concentration, right? Doesn't it depend on the concentration? Because if you have lower concentration of whatever it is, then the in... <laughs> well, we want it to be at the end point, right? So should I just go... Well, yeah, the end point is not going to be... Yeah, the end point is not going to be um, acidic for sure, so it should be 2. So just 2. Because you don't want it... Like, the first one transitions literally at the half equivalent point, which is not good. Wait, could you use the half equivalent transition? No, that's not a good idea because it changes too slowly. Okay. The ionization of ammonium ions is endothermic, which are the changes that result in the increase of A3O plus. Okay, so if you dilute it, that will decrease all of the stuff. Wait, that would make sense, right? Because 
it goes from less solute molecules to more solute molecules. So if you increase that, it'll want to make more of the solute stuff. So I'm pretty sure one makes sense. And then if you increase the temperature, it's endothermic, so it wants to get rid of the temperature. So it'll go to the right as well. Ah, oh, makes sense. So it should be D, both of them. So if you increase the C, so basically the Nernst equation is also there. So basically your potential is equal to E minus RT over NF, ln Q. So if you increase Q, your uh, voltage is going to decrease. But if you decrease Q, then it's going to increase. So if you increase Cu2+, plus, that's on the right side of the equation. So that's going to decrease your thing. So that's not good. We want to increase it, right? Yeah. So we want to decrease the Q. Okay. So adding Cl minus will precipitate some of the Ag plus, and that'll decrease the stuff in the denominator, which means it'll increase Q as well, which is not what we want. Yeah, that's not good. So D is also correct for this one. Okay. 38. How are we doing on time? Okay. So as long as we get a 40 by the 30 minute mark, we should be good. Okay. When the following skeleton in the equation is balanced with small whole number coefficients, what are the coefficient and location of H2O? Oh no, <laughs> this is so sad. I don't like doing this kind of stuff, but we can do some epic stuff and do it. So basically your Cu goes from zero to Cu2 plus, and you gotta add two electrons here, and then the MnO4 minus uh, you get reduced. Or whoops, four minus plus how many things we got. So it goes from 7 plus to 4 plus, so plus 3e minus, okay. All right, and then we have to multiply this by 3, multiply this by 2. So we'll have 8 oxygens on this side and um, 4 oxygens on this side. So we have a difference of 4 oxygens, so we'll have to add 4 more oxygens on this side by using water, and that will take 4 more water. So 4 on the product side. D. 39, let's go, okay. What do the following species contain the element in the highest oxidation state? We only left one blank, right? Which one do we leave blank? Oh, 25, okay, we only left one blank. So, which of the following contains an element in the highest oxidation state? So, OS is gonna be eight plus, that seems pretty high. N5 is all, wait, what, one fifth, damn, okay. Then CO is like a minus, so these guys are 5 plus each, and then these guys are going to be 8 minus, so 6 plus, so the first one is probably right. 40. What is the standard reduction potential of H2, HG2 plus to HGL? Okay, so I did a problem like this recently, and basically you have to do it individually. So you have to first find the delta G's, because you can't add E's. So you have to do delta G first, and then from the delta G, you calculate the new E. So delta G of the first one is going to be NFE. 2 times 9650, 0 times 0 0.9. And then delta G of the other one is going to be equal to 2 times 96500. I think it should work. I don't know. And then we add these, right? Yeah, we add these. Add these and divide by 2. So it's basically going to be 96 five zero zero times one point seven and that's what's gonna be our answer. Wait what? Oh and then we have to divide by NFE. So to divide by NF we have divide by two divide by nine six five zero zero so it should be plus zero point eight five so B. Oh that's an average interesting. Forty one. The lead storage acid storage battery consists of the following two half cells. What is the following concentration decreases as the battery is discharged? So uh Basically, your um, PV is going to be, wait, what? So PV is reduced in both cases. I mean, no, sorry, it's, yeah, it's first reduced and then it's oxidized. But, wait, what? So, wait, what? Like, there is no PV2 plus in solution. So H plus for sure will decrease. I don't see why PV2 plus would decrease. Because you're making, yeah, that would increase if anything. So we're just going to go with A. Seems legit. What is the following represents a uh, reduction potential as a function of pH? So reduction potential would be like this thing. So your Q, as you increase pH, your H plus goes down. So that means your Q will go up. But if your Q goes up, then your E goes down. And how do I know the difference here? 
So it's standard. So at one pH one, it should be one point two three, right? Because this will be zero if Q. Oh, oh. well, yeah. Oh. So one bar of pressure. Wait, bar. Why is it in bars? So what is a bar? Is that like ten to the five Pascal? Does it say? Ugh. Oh, why would it give it in bars, dude? Ah. Oh, well, let's see. Well, it's, E has to be one point two three somewhere. So this is for sure not right. So this is like under one point two three. Well, at zero is for sure not there. Wait, at zero? Okay, at zero pH, you got... Oh, wait, maybe. Yeah, I just need to figure out where... Huh. So... Well, okay, one bar is approximately in the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure. So, we should be good. So, it's one atmosphere, the denominator. So, in order to have one... So, at zero, it should... This thing should be zero because we'll have one molarity of hydrogen ion. So this will be zero and then 1.23. So I guess it is A. Let's go. Oh, is it it's literally exactly at 1.2. That's so wrong though. Shouldn't it be up a little bit? Okay, yeah, we're just gonna go with it because at zero it should be 1.23, so A. If it's not A, I'm gonna be triggered because the other one's wrong. It's for sure not like 1.2, like it's some random pH. Yeah, okay. Unless I understand what a bar is completely wrong, that could be a problem. Okay, in a ground state, P atom in gas phase, how many electrons? Phosphorus, okay, not P atom, okay. How many have quantum numbers N is equal to three, which means that it's three, okay, and then L means it's P, and then M means it's just a specific orbital. Okay, so it's just two, right? Wait, <laughs> okay, nice. Nah, so it should just be two. Rank, oh, wait, wait, no, it's in the phosphorus atom, okay. So three P, so it should, it's three P should all have one in each. Oh, so it's so cool, so good thing we checked, so it should be B, okay. Um, increasing uh, first ionization. So S I P G E and A S. Ah oh, no, why is it in a square, dude? So like P is for sure has a higher uh, than S I, right? Yeah. And A S is greater than G E. So let's see if we could eliminate any. So this is for sure wrong. Uh, this one could be right. Wait no, sorry. P is greater than wait what? Yeah, A S should be greater. So this could be right. Um, this could be right. And oh, rip. <laughs> the only thing we can eliminate is this one, so let us see. Well, we also know that GE G has a least <laughs> and P has the most. Ah, oh, no. Bro, how am I supposed to know between these two? SI and AS, which one has higher ionization? How am I supposed to know, man? Okay, well, they're like essentially in the same shell, so like moving up a column is not that big a deal. Wait, what? No. No, adding the extra electron shouldn't have that much of an impact because it's in the same, um, they're not, you're not putting two electrons in the same orbital, so AS should be significantly lower. Yeah, so AS should be smaller. Okay, so D. 44 is D. 45, okay, which gas phase atom or ion has the following ground state? Um, so basically 4 is 2, so it's in this row, and then it has how many? 4 plus 3. So we got... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So cobalt. And it can't be any of the ions because then, yeah, it can't be any of the ions because then they would take it out of their S subshell. So it should be just B. 46. How much time do we have? We better be Gucci. We're kind of Gucci? Not, not exactly. Okay. Well, of course, the last questions are like the uh, fastest questions to do, so this should be fine. What change in principal quantum number for an electron in a hydrogen atom would correspond to the longest emission, to the emission of the longest wavelength? So longest wavelength means least energy, so we gotta have the smallest change. So an emission means it uh, jumps down to higher, wait, what? No, it goes, wait, what? Am I confusing myself? No, no, it goes to a lower energy level. Wait, no, what? Okay, okay. We're not trolling. No, so that's a drop from a higher energy level, which is n equals higher to the lowest energy level. Okay, so it's well, uh, all of them except d for sure. Or no, what? So not c or d. So four one or five two. Basically, the way it works is it's like uh, one over four minus one over twenty five. You square the n, or it is one over one minus one over sixteen. And I'm pretty sure this one is way smaller, so it is going to be b forty seven. Similar electronegativity, b and c do not. Well, kind of. B and AL, uh, B and SI. I feel like B and SI would be better. AL and C. Yeah, it should be B and SI. Okay. Because they're diagonal this way. So, basically the way I think about it is like, as you get farther from fluorine, your electronegativity 
incre it decreases. So AL is like way less than C, but B and SI might be similar. Okay. Okay, permanganate ion. It's purple, white, all the. Okay, so is it just the unpaired electron thing? So technetium, where is that? So it's technetium 7 plus and MN7 plus. Oh, what? No, the same place. God dang. It doesn't have any F electrons. Any okay, so let's see. It has nothing to do with this. It has nothing to do with color, right? It could be this. Yeah, I think this is the only thing that matters. Because none of the other ones have to do with white, so it should be C. Longest NO bond. So I guess we have to find the bond order of each one. Like what? Um, hmm. how do you do this? So, resonance in the NO3 minus one would probably give you a four thirds bond order. Then NO2 would give you, would it be NO single bond, is it asking? Well, NO for sure is not because that has like a triple bond. So, five plus six minus one. So, yeah, that would be a triple bond over there. And then NO2, let's see. So, NO2 minus is gonna have five plus 12 plus one is 18. So, you would have one double bond and that would be resonating between the two, so the bond order would be 1.5. Okay, and then if you had one less, then you'd have, um, instead of 18, you would have 16, which means it'll have these, so that's less. So we have, right now, we have a 3, we have a 2, we have a 1.5, and we have a 4 thirds. I'm pretty sure. Wait, let's just check. So, does this work? Um, so it should be... 5 plus 18, 23, 24. So this is 24? Yeah, this is 24. So it should just be A because it has a bond order of 4 thirds, which is the least, which means it has longest. Okay, A. 50! Epic. Which uh, pair of species have the same shape? So it shouldn't be CO2 and SO2 because they have a different number of um, uh, valence electrons. C2H6 and B2H6. B2H6, how does that name work? Kaborn has like a not proper octet nonsense. Yeah, I don't know how that works. Uh, CCL4 and TICL4. Where's TI? I don't know how TI looks. What the heck? How many valence? It only has two, right? So two, uh, two plus twenty, so thirty, and that has thirty-two. So this should not work. Yeah, I don't know how metals work. Okay, this should have different shapes too. Oh, rip. Cause three minus. What is SO2 like? That's like ozone. So that's not right. Um, C2H6, B2H6, so that would be a different number of valence. So it could be B. I think B is the only one that makes sense. But then again, B2H6 doesn't have the nonsense. Uh, I think B2H6 would, uh, what the heck? Okay, B or C, guys, B or C. You guys said, uh, uh, we're going to go with C. All right, 51. So auxiliary ion. Bro, I think I got trolled by this. I'm pretty sure it's resonant. So it's like, it looks like this. C O O C O O like that, but it resonates between these two, so there should only be one uh, distinct bond length because all of them are like 1.5. I don't think it resonates back here. Yeah, that doesn't work. So it should just be one. What are the following statements about molecular orbitals of, in a molecule is correct? No molecular orbital that is not true. Each molecular orbital must have a different number of nodes. No. The number of molecular orbitals is equal to half the number of atomic orbitals of the atoms that make up the molecule. Yeah, because two orbitals come together to make a molecular one? No. It should be equal to the number. Wait, no. Bonding are the lower energy ones, so that's not right. What the heck? Which one is it? Oh, maybe it is this one. Well, it's either A or B. What does the net overlap mean? Oh, okay, that probably makes sense. A, it makes sense. Well, basically all the other answers don't make any sense, so we're good. Okay, NF3. Has a bond angle of okay, um, not electronegative, not not this. So I'm pretty sure it's A. I read about it somewhere, but like basically, um, like all the first row elements have a lot more. They have their s two s thing participating a lot more, but like in three s, the three s doesn't participate that much. So should be A. Fifty four. Elite alien has a structure of this. What is the best description? Okay, well, let's see. Um, this looks pretty straightforward, right? I almost wrote on my tablet with a red pen. Okay, so we got C, 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 and then H, 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 H. So it should be linear and trigonal planar, right? And they should all be in the same plane. Wait. Oh, no, they're in perpendicular planes? Wait. Okay, so the central one is for sure linear, so it's one of A or B. And I think it has to do with, like, how uh, sigma bonds work. I can't, I don't remember. Is it all in the same plane? So like sigma bonds are on opposite sides of the carbons, but over here is on these sides. So in this case, 
these hydrogens would go here and then the other one would go perpendicular. Okay, so do we put it? A. Oh no, B. 55. Okay, pyrrole is pretty easy. You just look for a carbon that's not, that has four things bonded to it, but it's not symmetric. So this one over here does not seem symmetric because to its left, it's different from to its right. And then there's a, okay, so this one looks right. Wait, what? what's the difference between this one and this one? Wait, what? <laughs> oh, so these are different. So chiral means you can't superimpose its mirror image on itself. So could we rotate it so that, okay, B looks pretty chiral to me. 56, what the heck? How am I supposed to know? Bro, moment, both of these have OH groups, so like watch. Okay, so this is an acid, so maybe that helps. I don't know what precision things to make sure though mean. Okay, I think we should go with a strong base, or no, a weak base, because that matches up with this nonsense. Okay, so we're just gonna go with B, because it seems right. I have no idea how to do this. Okay, 57. So, if, ah, uh, so if it's stereoselective, it depends on, it should be an angiomers, because, like, the way it works is, like, stereoselective, now, stereospecific means that, depending on the configuration of the inputs, the output should be different. Wait, but are these the products? No, it's the relationship, it's the product. Well, right now they're cis-trans, right? So like, what does it replace? Oh, I'm pretty sure it replaces the double bond. So, wait, will they even be structural isomers then? Cause, wait, no. Huh, I'm pretty sure they're identical. Because I'm pretty sure they get rid of the double bond somehow. Yeah, they get rid of the double bond, dude. Oh, okay, yeah, so they should be identical. Wait, shoot. But could they be enantiomers? Oh, that's so confusing. Wait, they could be enantiomers, dude. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's enantiomers because, like, it's gonna be, both the carbons are gonna be asymmetric carbons, right? Because it's gonna have a CH3, then a BR, then an H, and then this other part of it. So it's gonna be asymmetric, so it should be B. Okay. 58. Okay, I just. I just remember this, like, I read about Fisher esterification, and I'm pretty sure, like, it creates an alkoxide ion that becomes a, uh, wait, was that Williamson ester for me? Whatever, there's, like, a bunch of things, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it should be C, though, because that's, like, what it does. It converts it to an ion, and then after that, it could combine. Yeah, it, like, makes a, yeah, okay, C. 59. Nine minutes is not good. Okay, so basically it should be one of the, it should be switching one of the basic amino acids for one of the acidic amino acids. So, like, maybe this one because methionine is, um, like, nonpolar. So you're going from a base to a nonpolar. Wait, no, no, this is not even a basic one, so that's not it. I salute, no, this is not it. This is not it because these are both nonpolar. So serine to lysine. Yeah, so this should have the biggest impact because you're changing the acidity. Okay, because lysine is a basic amino acid, so it should be A. 60! Hydrolysis of a disaccharide with a dilute acid gives one, only a single type of monosaccharide as a product. Okay, I didn't know this because it's probably um, not lactose. Wait, what the heck? These are so weird. Okay, because lactose has gl uh, glucose and galactose. Melobios? Question mark. I don't know. I, I thought I knew it. Uh, which one are identical? So if you flip... Okay, this is a non-identical, um, this one looks pretty identical, oh no, it has a CH3 there, so it's probably this one. No, why is there a CH2OH there? Bro, I'm so confused, okay. Okay, I, I guess I'll just guess then. This one seems right, because this thing is going to become a C2OH, or whatever, so we're going to go with B. Alright, let us first try 25 again. I had a strategy to solve it, but it seems like that was too long. Or 23? Wait, do we not? Oh, we answered 25, not 23, okay. How much time do we have? We have six minutes. So we had to find the entropy change of that. Oops. Okay, I don't think we have time. Let's check our answers. Let us guess something for this one, and we will say, let us just go with B, why not? Okay, uh, so let us check our answers. Um, alrighty, so we got B, A, C, oops, we missed three, nice, okay. D, C, C, A. Okay, how many did we miss? That was pretty bad, but one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Bro, wait. Okay, so that's like a forty-four. I don't know how good that is on national exams. I do not have a comparison point, but that's what we got. What to do? Okay, let's really briefly go over what I got wrong. Let's see. So three. Wait. Does, okay. What does binary metal chlorine mean? Wait. With only two elements. What? What does that mean? Okay. Oh. 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 Do we do the? We have, do we have to like think about the oxidation state? Oh. I guess all of these guys would make two plus with C 
CL, right? Oh, okay, that would make more sense. So, yeah, we just had to do it with two CL instead of one CL. Okay, 15. Bro, we got this one wrong? Okay, so you decrease volume, you increase pressure. Wait, what? Oh, that's so troll. Is it just 1.0 because, like, vapor pressure is equal to... Oh my god, wait. Yeah, it doesn't change because it's equilibrium with its vapor, basically. So that makes sense. Okay, 24. Um... So this one changes, I guess, then. Oh, but there's more water, so that means it... Oh my god, so it should be... It should be take the same amount, but it should just be less steep, so it should be B, right? So 24B. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, 26. Wait, whoops. Uh, what did I do wrong? So it should be... So it should be E to the negative... What was it? To the EA over R times 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. Okay, so it will be e to the 6500 over 8.31 times 1 over 1 over 4, 10. Right, 273 plus 37. So minus 1 over the new temperature, which would be um, minus 15, which is 395. Oh, did I? Oops. <laughs> so it should just be 7. Or about, wait, what? That's not an option. Hold up. Oh, 6500. Wait. Yeah, it's around 51, I think. Because K2 over K1 is that, so it has a decrease by that much. Is it 8.31? So 6500. Zero, zero. Wait, it was 37, right? I'm not, I'm not blind or anything. 37 to 22. Oh! Oh, I'm so stupid! I can't add 300. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, we know how to add, boys. Ah, oh, that makes so much more sense. And then E to the this. Oh my god, how am I bad? <laughs> okay, that makes so much more sense. Okay, 28. Yeah, I, I didn't know how to do this one. So let's think about it. Uh, so it makes more of it, and then the half-life, so maybe it's less hours, right? No, but like then this one still has like at least most of it active. Wait, how do you define the activity? Does it depend on the half-life too? What's the definition of activity? Oh, the number of decays per second. So, so after 20 hours, then maybe it becomes equal because See, I don't, I don't know how this works. So it just becomes equal faster. So when would it be equal? It's when it has like a lot less. Oh, so at the, eventually it'll equilibrate, right? Like eventually it'll become like the amount that's being added to the new, to the TC is the amount that decayed just past a couple of minutes ago. So how do we know it's at 20 though and not like 120? Well at 20, it's like a decent amount of the molybdenum. Oh, okay. Because like after 120 hours, like a lot of the molybdenum has decayed and we don't want that because it has a much lower half-life so we want at least like most of it to still be there okay that makes sense kind of not entirely i, I will not get it right again so this one just d then if i yeah because i was not sure whether second order kinetics was a thing okay yeah the second order kinetics is not right maybe because it depends on c too okay so 33 oh bro what how did i get this wrong oh this doesn't affect it because it's a solid so just b oh my god why am I making so many sillies, dude? Wait, is that what I said? Wait, what? Is neither? Wait, what did I say? 33. See, I said both. It's actually neither. So what, why does increasing the volume of the container not change anything? Oh, because... Oh, the equilibrium constant only depends on the pressure of carbon dioxide. So whatever the pressure of carbon dioxide is, it'll try to make it to the same pressure regardless. Okay. Uh, same mistake. Okay, let's see. So I feel like this is right. Well, okay, the second one is for sure right because it's endothermic. So if you increase the temperature, it wants to go to the right. So did I put 36? So I guess it's B then. <laughs> I just made up that rule because I thought it would make sense. Because if you do the Q stuff. Oh, but I guess it would also decrease the concentration. Yeah, because it's getting diluted. So yeah, okay. So 33 would be B. I mean, sorry, what? 36 would be B. Yeah, okay. 38. Oh my god, what? Oh, there's an OH2. I, I ignored the OH2. So there would be... So there's three of these, so it would be six plus four, so ten, and then there would be eight on this side. So you'd have two on the left, the reactant side. Okay, thirty-eight. Wait, what? Hold up, let's think again. So there's three to you, because there's three to get from here to here, and then two. Yeah, so this is multiplied by two, uh, three. So we have six O plus two MN, so plus four, so... Oh, it's in basic solution. Oh, okay, so yeah, you'd have to do your OH, you'd add your H plus and then you'd add OH and then that would cancel some. Oh, okay, so yeah, it gives you B, okay. Makes sense. It's basic solution, I gotta pay attention to that. Well, I, I mean, I did it wrong anyway, I didn't see the OH, so that's a problem. Okay, 44. It was not, what did I put? D, then I guess it was C, I didn't know how to do that. How do you tell the difference? I guess you had to memorize it maybe? So C, 44, D, yeah. 
48. So it's not this one. Maybe. Yeah, it might be D then. A? What does octane have to do with color difference? Oh, maybe it has to do with electrons and like free electrons. Okay. 50. So is it 50B? God dang it! <laughs> so 50, 50, and missed. So sad. 57. Are they identical? 57D. Wait, what didn't I say? Oh, there's diethereomers? Oh, because if you. Wait, what? Diethereomers mean there's cis trans isomers. Wait, diethereomers mean they have to have a double bond. I thought it gets rid of the. Oh, so this is the thing. Oh, yeah, this is what it was, right? Oh, okay, okay. Well, why are they not? Oh, they're not mirror images of each other, that's why. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, they're not mirror images, so. Okay. And then 58. I guess it shifts the equilibrium to the right. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah, this is for Williamson. That's for synthesis. Okay. Whoops. D. Propanoic acid? Okay. Maybe it's like the opposite for Fisher. Instead of converting the the uh, alcohol to uh, ion, it converts the other thing to the electron. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, and then this one I didn't know how to do. Mm. Is it identical? So you have that. Oh, maybe it would just make an OH. Oh, so this one would get an H, and this one, wait, would both of them get? Oh, both of them would get OH, because you add in a water. Oh, that's a big brain. Okay, okay, that makes so much more sense. Okay. Oh, rip, I should've known. Okay, well, that's all I got. Thank you guys for watching so much. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.